Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this month's Thinking Outside the Box tutorial which is of course an Easter basket. So um, we are going to start off with a piece of cardstock which is six and a half inches by six and three quarters and um, we're going to start on the six and a half inch side first and we're going to score it at two and a quarter inches. and at four and a quarter. Just gonna, which should be, if you turned it around, would be two and a quarter from this side as well. So two and a quarter and four and a quarter. And then we're going to turn it the other way and we're going to score the long side at three quarters of an inch, but we're just going to score just to this intersecting line here. And then we're going to do our next score at one and a half and then at two and a quarter. So essentially each of these are three quarters of an inch along. Then our next score is going to be at four and a half inches. Then five and a quarter and at six. So you'll end up with these six score lines along here. Then we're going to turn our cardstock around and we're going to do exactly the same thing again on this side here. So at three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, four and a half, five and a quarter, and six. So you should end up with all of these score lines looking like this. So now I can put my Simply Scored away and we're going to do a little bit of cutting. So just with your paper snips or you could use your uh, trimmer if you prefer, whichever um, you prefer to use. We're just going to cut along each of these score lines to where they intersect. I'm going to use some bigger scissors for this job. And same on the other side, those same six lines again. So now we can fold along all of our uh, score lines here. And do exactly the same on the other side as well. Now once you've done your folding, with these two middle um, flaps here, the largest ones, you want to trim just a few millimetres off the side. Um, so it could be sort of five mil or, or an eighth of an inch or so. Now you can use your trimmer or you can use your um, scissors, whichever you prefer. For expediency I'm going to use my scissors. And you want to do that on both sides like so and you'll see why we've done that in just a moment so now we're ready to start putting our basket together so for this um, step I tend to use some of our multi-purpose adhesive and I just put a couple of little 
squiggles on my first set of tabs and I'm just folding them across here. Now how far you fold them across is up to you. It will adjust the angle of the side of your basket. I tend to do it so that my central apex here is at about centre on the bottom of my box here. So sort of about centre. I don't measure that, I just eyeball it um, and see how I go. And then I'm going to do the same thing again with my next set and I'm just going to cross those over a little way as well. Like so. And then my final two are going to come in almost straight across. And so the reason that we trimmed a little bit off the top here was so that when this one folds over, it's not sticking up over the edge. So that then this side will come in nice and cleanly and close over the edge here. Now the reason I like to use the multi-purpose adhesive is it does give me a little bit of time. If I decide that I need to adjust any of these, I can kind of still shift them around a little bit. See, I'm pushing this one in a little more. So it gives you that time to just kind of play around with where your zigzags are. Now while you're waiting for that to dry and you go do the other side, I always find it quite useful just to use a large paper clip and just pop in the side here and that just kind of holds those in place while I adhere the next side. So now we're just going to do exactly the same thing again with our three little flaps here. mean to go quite that far on that one. Let's just move that back down to where it should be. There we go. That looks better. And then our final one in the top here. And we're just going to line this one up square at the top like so. So we've now got this cute little rounded basket shape and once again while I wait for that glue to dry I'm just going to pop a paper clip on there and let that just uh, go to the side there while we move on to the next step. So the next bit that we're going to prepare is just the handle for our basket. Now you could do this any way you like. I'm keeping mine quite plain for this basket. Um, so I have just cut a strip of berry burst um, and it's just two centimeters wide by 21. So it's just a piece of an A4 um, sheet of cardstock. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit of stamping on my handle. So I'm using, um, for this I'm using the beautiful Peacock set, which is one of the celebration sets at the moment. And I'm just gonna use this one here and a little bit of Berry Burst ink and I'm just going to stamp just a little bit of detail up and over the handle. I'm not being too perfect about where I stamp, just giving it a bit of decoration. You could of course stamp your cardstock before you made up your basket if you wanted more pattern. You could emboss your cardstock first for your basket. 
um, and of course you could use designer series paper instead of cardstock if you wanted so that's entirely up to you so I've got my handle in place here and then I can actually adhere that straight onto my box so I'm going to use some glue dots for that just to give it a nice strong hold and I'm actually going to adhere it just inside the box so I'm happy enough that my adhesive has dried enough on here now to take these off and I'm just going to line this up inside my basket like so and then a couple of glue dots on this end as well and line it up on this side as well so there we have our basket with the handle already for filling but of course it needs a bit of decoration first so we're going to do a little bit of stamping uh, so once again with our beautiful peacock and so I'm going to stamp the peacock body just with some elegant eggplant And then its beautiful blooming tail we're going to color with uh, three different colors so to start with I'm going to ink it up with my berry burst over the whole surface and then using a sponge dauber and some fresh fig ink I'm just going to add some fresh fig around the outside edges so this just gives us a great tonal effect on this tail feather for our peacock and then the final step is that I'm going to use some elegant eggplant once again with my sponge dauber and I'm just going to go right on the edges with this I don't want too much eggplant on here just a really little hint so just sponging that on and then I can stamp that down and you'll see that we come out with this beautiful three-toned peacock tail I hope you can see the variation in color on the video there and then as a final step I'm also going to um, stamp a couple of these beautiful flourishing um, tail feathers so I'm going to stamp one with berry burst and one where I ink it up with berry burst and then just add a touch of eggplant just on some of the tips of some of the feathers just a light touch I'm going to stamp that one down as well and so once again we've got that great two-tone color effect on this one so now I hope you like fussy cutting because we're now going to cut out our stamped images ready to layer up on our basket so I have already gone ahead and cut mine out it didn't take too long these ones were a little bit fiddly the tail feathers but not too bad the rest of it was certainly easy enough and I've also gone ahead and just punched a whisper white circle using my one and three quarter inch circle punch so the first step that I'm going to do is to adhere my peacock onto my circle and I'm going to use some stamping dimensionals for this bit like so but before I stick it down I'm going to work out approximately where I want my little tail feathers to go because I want to adhere those to my circle first so now that I've got my dimensionals here I can just kind of hold it in place and where work out where I want these to go and there's no right or wrong place that you're going to pop those so you just work out what suits you and I can just pop some snail under there so 
worked out approximately where I want them. Whoops, now I've gone and moved it all. So about there. And now I can adhere my tail feather on. like so and last but not least I'm going to add my peacock on and I'm also going to pop these this layer up on some dimensionals because I want lots of height on this piece and this just lines up perfectly this is the thing that I love about stamping up so much is just how everything all coordinates so nicely so that it all fits just perfectly in that stamped image there and now we can adhere this to the side of our box like so now you can pop that on more dimensionals or you can just adhere it straight on for me I'm just going to stick it straight on with some multi-purpose And I deliberately wanted these feathers to kind of look like they're shooting up the handle of our basket here. So I'm just placing it exactly like the so. So you can just hold that while it dries. And no peacock would be complete without a little bit of glimmer and shine. So we're going to add just some rhinestones. Now you could colour these if you wanted to. Personally, I'm just going to leave them as they are. So I'm just going to put a little rhinestone in each. Of the eyes of my peacock's tail. Whoops. like so and that just adds a fabulous sparkle and finisher to our lovely peacock and then you could also add some of our great tutti frutti adhesive backed sequins as well to your basket I love these sequins I think they are just so much fun you just do a scatter of the sequins wherever you like and on this side I'm not going to put anything stamped on this side so instead I'm just going to use this gorgeous metallic edge berry burst ribbon so I'm just going to tie a bow around my handle here and as always with bows it just takes a little bit of fiddling to get it sitting just how you want it to not too bad at all. Get a little snip here. And there is our completed Easter basket. Or of course it could be for anything else. The peacock is not particularly Easter themed. Um, but I wanted to do something just a little bit different. And there's our basket and because Stampin' Up! is so clever they even have some coordinating ready shreddy to go in it so I 
can just pile some of this into our basket. And then no Easter basket would be complete without Easter eggs, of course. So we can just stick those up in there as well. And we have a super sweet peacock flavoured Easter basket with coordinating shred and even coordinating Easter eggs. So I hope you'll give this um, fun box a go, fun basket a go. And thanks for joining me today. Bye.